yes sir okay uh, we'll Good start evening, who are there shirish only and uh, manjunath manjunath has not come yet shivani shirish okay now we will start then right so today i will be only discussing about uh, uh, osteomyelitis okay acute and chronic i will not go into further details of anything else i will restrict myself to osteomyelitis right okay before uh, going into that Okay. Okay. Try to understand what is osteomyelitis, right? See, acute osteomyelitis. You should know. Acute osteomyelitis. It why it is common in metaphyseal region. It starts in metaphyseal region. okay i will explain briefly some theory aspect then we'll go to mcqs and relevant things so i will draw a picture of tibia okay this is diaphysis this is end of bone this is epiphysis and this is metaphysis okay right so osteomyelitis is basically what do you mean by osteomyelitis is infection of bone marrow osteomyelitis myelite mylos is marrow bone marrow infection so it is generally infective it can be of course non infective non suppurative will not go into that so osteomyelitis starts in the metaphyseal region okay there are certain reasons why it starts in a metaphyseal region most common thing is anatomy anatomy of the metaphyseal region is the blood vessels are having hair pin bend they are having a hair pin bend arrangement at the metaphyseal region so what does this lead to this lead to slowing of blood flow hair pin bend leads to slowing of your blood flow so any commonly any way bacteremia any bacteremia what it causes there is free floating in bacteremia what happens bacteria will be circulating in entire blood circulation so bacteremia is uh, bacteria circulating in the blood vessels so if there is a bacteremia for any other reason if there is a infection elsewhere if there is a metastatic infection so blood flows slow slows down in metaphyseal region hence there is a possibility that it gets infected there are certain reasons why metaphysis is a commonest reason for osteomyelitis second is phagocytosis phagocytosis is less in metaphyseal region third is it is more prone for trauma so if it is more prone for trauma there is a hematoma which is a rich culture media rich culture media for settlement of uh, bacteria and hence beginning of the infection so these are more important reasons why the osteomyelitis begins in metaphyseal regions you should know this okay and this is a growing region and hence there is increased blood flow or hyperemia hyperemia there is increased blood flow in the metaphyseal region increase means excessive blood flow but the blood flow slow flows 
very very slowly because of the hairpin band and phagocytosis is minimized because here phagocytosis is minimized because there is a bone remodeling happening continuously will not get into that but please remember phagocytosis is reduced and this is pr prone for trauma right okay right so this is a most common cause as i said and one more thing you should remember what is the common commonest organism commonest organism which is the cause for osteomyelitis is staphylococcus commonest organism causing osteomyelitis is staphylococcus aureus please remember this is a commonest organism in all the age group infants adults and even in hiv infected individuals this is one important thing second thing is even in open fractures this is the commonest organism please remember staphylococcus aureus is a commonest organism responsible for osteomyelitis but in diabetic foot there can be anaerobes and in uh, sickle cell disease patient sickle cell disease patients salmonella is a commonest organism and in iv drug abusers it is pseudomonas so but for this special conditions most common organism is staphylococcus aureus why i am insisting to for you to remember is the drug of choice whenever there is a uh, case of suspected osteomyelitis you should choose the antibiotics which is useful or staph aureus is sensitive for you should know this okay and of course you should remember what are the presentation how it presents in childhood or children you should remember they come with a high degree fever and high degree fever second is inability to move inability to move the joint or the limb third is trauma 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 history can be plus minus so most importantly a child is brought to you with history of high degree fever and inability to move you should rule out the history of trauma you are not sure because the parents will not be attending all the time with they are not there with the children they might give a vague history of trauma okay to break the monotony we'll go to some mcqs a boy presented with multiple non suppurative osteomyelitis with sickle cell anemia what will be the causative organism salmonella yes so even a shortest possible memory will help you to answer this question okay manjunath has not come still anyway okay sir present present sir okay good good very good so look at this i think that is slide is uh, what is that which has been marked sequestrum cloaca inulcrum or oven bone that question is gone beyond the screen limit i guess anyway so this is a image based question what is this which has been marked can anybody take a chance here 
sequestrum so sequestrum i will explain you in a minute what is sequestrum you should please understand sequestrum is a dead bone dead bone surrounded by a granulation tissue okay dead bone surrounded by a granulation tissue that is very very important because my professor used to crack a joke saying saying that people who eat non veg and throw the bones on the road isn't it on the table plates of the dining uh, table so that is not sequestrum so sequestrum means a dead bone in a living organism surrounded by a granulation tissue do you understand more importantly you should all more, one more important thing is radiological appearances it is always more white or dense as compared to surrounding bone please remember this this is very very important look at the texture the appearance of sequestrum i am marking this is more dense as compared to <coughs> as compared to the surrounding bone that is because surround because of infection there is a lot of inflammation here so because of excessive inflammation there is absorption of the bone and it is osteoporotic so resorption of the bone because of excessive blood flow and diffuse osteoporosis causes radiolucency in and around the bone but because sequestrum has no blood supply it remains as it is so it is more whiter radio dense or brighter than the surrounding bone you should remember this right a 12 year male came with a swelling of lower end of tibia which is surrounded by a rim of reactive bone what is a likely diagnosis so 12 year old male swelling of lower end of tibia surrounded lytic lesion surrounded by a rim of reactive bone yes come on osteomyelitis osteomyelitis okay there are three more option this is shivani okay see listen brody sopsis brody sopsis broad is abscess okay so certainly you have ruled out giant cell tumor and hyperthyroidism now the question or the confusion stays between osteomyelitis and broad is abscess please remember rim of reactive bone rim of reactive bone gives an indicator that the right answer is broad is abscess so one more important thing about brodis abscess i will tell you i think i have a, a radiograph of that but please remember a very well defined in a, especially in lower end of femur and upper end of tibia very well defined lytic lesion surrounded by a rim of osteosclerotic bone very very sclerotic bone like this no periosteal reaction no periosteal reaction okay and rest of the architecture is absolutely normal and the patient complains of pain dull leaking type of pain not severe pain so what this indicates is there has been a incidence of infection and the body has very well tried to contain it it has been surround the body has tried to ward off the infection this is possible when 
immunity of the patient is very strong or the low virulence organism is the cause you should remember all these words these are important so brody's abscess is a so found in infection with low virulence or with a very good immunity of a patient and this successfully the uh, the body has tried to contain the infection in a very small location so what is important again brody's abscess is it is one of the type of sub acute type of osteomyelitis okay i forgot uh, before I, of course i have not forgot acute osteomyelitis sub acute osteomyelitis and chronic osteomyelitis these are classified based on the duration of symptoms acute osteomyelitis means less than 2 weeks sub acute is 2 to 3 weeks chronic is more than 3 weeks mark my words this is very very important okay so sub acute is one of the uh, uh, the duration is between 2 to 3 weeks this dura cut off duration is very important so brody's abscess need not be sub acute it is also type of a chronic osteomyelitis because they do not come immediately they can come late even up to one month two months three months if it is not investigated or if there is no radiograph taken they will come very late okay you understand we'll go to the next question a 22 year old male presents with pain and deformity in the right lower limb he had sustained trauma in the same limb 2 years back x ray suggestive of no brainer is it is a question isn't it chronic osteomyelitis very good so they have given a radiograph here where there is a this is all is a periosteal reaction and this is a small lytic lesion or a cavity look at this these are all small cavity bone is destroyed this is a new bone formation because of a sub periosteal reaction i will come to radiological features later okay one more important thing true about acute osteomyelitis there can be multiple answers please read carefully cannot be detected on x ray before 2 weeks yes or no right or wrong when there is only one choice mm -hmm. you can always rule out but when there are multiple choice right answers like that of uh, exam in pgi you should read each of the choices very very carefully cannot be detected on x ray before 2 weeks true or false true sir. very good it is true hmm. bone scan can detect after 2 weeks yes sir true no sir before also it can detect ah see that's why you should be very careful bone scan is one of the earliest investigation or earliest inve investigative modality to detect the osteomyelitis please remember that i'll come to the diagnosis i stopped short of etiology pathology pathogenesis and clinical features diagnosis i have not explained but let i will come to that little later severe pain no sir severe pain acute osteomyelitis yes then sir there is definitely severe pain i told you no child doesn't allow to touch the limb or the patient doesn't move from one place there there is definitely severe pain limitation of movements yes sir true, very good sir. it is correct isn't it true secondary osteomyelitis is associated with compound fracture right or wrong read the question very carefully secondary osteomyelitis associated with compound fracture compound fracture can also cause a osteomyelitis isn't it that is more common or primary hematogenous osteomyelitis going to chronic is more common primary is more common primary hematogenous osteomyelitis 
becoming chronic is more common okay so you know for sure the answers now what are what are the what are the things which are true about the osteomyelitis okay uh, some slides about the text based on class uh, duration i told you it is acute osteomyelitis sub acute this is some books have given 6 weeks plus but please don't go on that 2 to 3 weeks more than 3 weeks is chronic osteomyelitis this is your standard text uh, undergraduate textbook i am talking don't get confused by for 6 weeks 2 weeks 2 to 3 weeks and more than 3 weeks okay so this is what i was explaining most commonly the infection starts in metaphyseal region look at this this is a growth plate this is epiphysis this is metaphyseal this is diaphyseal okay so i told you most common site of infection is metaphyseal region so bacteremia the the uh, bacteria settles down causes inflammation causes suppuration necrosis and abscess formation so what happens this is a pathophysiology but we we have to understand certain things once there is a pus formation it will follow the track or track of path of least resistance path of least resistance so in childhood the periosteum is adherent to the bone very very loosely unlike adult so it goes under the periosteum look at this diagram the abscess gets burst out and spreads under the periosteum this because the abscess goes under the periosteum the pus is elevating the periosteum there is a formation of new bone here okay there are various routes where the pus can escape so most common route is now it has escaped into the subperiosteal region from here it can escape into the muscles and then in ab above the uh, through the skin in forms a sinus okay that is the difference in osteomyelitis in children and in adults so in adults what happens the periosteum is very very tightly adherent okay so the pus extends into the marrow the osteomyelitis becomes very very diffuse it extends or the pus extends into the marrow easily but in childhood it escapes into the subperiosteal region so this is and then as i told you most importantly it doesn't spread into the joint it doesn't spread into the joint because this facial plate doesn't allow the spread of the pus across the joint but please understand one thing if the metaphysis is a part of the joint okay i'll explain you suppose suppose there is a humeral head this is a epiphysis this is the metaphysis okay this is the diaphysis but please remember in formation there is a glenoid there is a capsule like this so here the metaphyseal there is a pus formation here pus escapes from outside here it goes and forms a new bone formation 
but if it escapes here it can cause a septic arthritis so even though it doesn't escape through the epiphysis here because a metaphysis is a part of a joint if the metaphysis is a intracapsular if the metaphysis is intracapsular septic arthritis is, is one of the complication am i clear look at this this is what i was explaining right but in tibia where new there is a knee joint form like this there is a beginning of a abscess here in the metaphyseal region look at this the metaphysis in of the upper end of tibia is outside the knee joint i mean it is extra capsular please remember you have to remember your anatomy the metaphysis does not go into the is not part of the knee joint because the capsule is attached to the edge here so here osteomyelitis doesn't become septic arthritis as a complication okay so upper end of humerus upper end of femur and lower end of humerus please remember i'll repeat upper end of humerus lower end of humerus and upper end of femur if there is osteomyelitis septic arthritis is one of the complication elsewhere it doesn't become septic arthritis that of course doesn't apply in infancy will not go into that okay this slide is little poor okay so what we do what we do when whenever there is a child i always keep mentioning about the child is because acute osteomyelitis is more common in children so please remember that so what happens a child is brought who is toxic means running a very high degree temperature comes with upper end of around a pain around the knee joint so you should suspect osteomyelitis unless proved otherwise no doubt about that so if the symptoms were before 24 hours so what we do you take an x ray x ray doesn't detect anything x ray is absolutely normal you can subject the patient to mri but for that the child has to be cooperative you have to sedate because the child doesn't lie down still in the mri console that is difficult third is bone scan most of the hospitals in most of the places there is no bone scan availability please remember this so these three things are ruled out very often and within 24 hours when the child child is brought you straight away start the iv antibiotics what you can do is you can do blood tests you can do blood test so what you can what is most commonly which is abnormal which is detected in osteomyelitis is esr and crp okay so esr and crp and of course definitely there is a neutrophilia so most common play, uh, most commonly you see the this is brought as a medical emergency so what you do other investigations are not possible within 24 hours you do x ray if it is normal still you have a strong suspicion you start iv antibiotics covering staph aureus most commonly augmentin okay so as i told you so what about the other things if the child is brought after 24 hours definitely you can see x ray change please remember you can see x ray changes i mean but it need not be bony changes bony changes as manjunath mentioned is only after 7 to 10 days okay but in x ray soft tissue planes are lost always you remember there can be tricky question in your exams x ray changes 
are seen after 24 hours in the form of loss of tissue planes loss of tissue planes but x ray change doesn't always mean bony changes bony changes seen on x rays after 7 to 10 days only but x ray soft tissue shadows can be seen within after 24 hours please remember this am i clear okay marrow changes of course mri is very picks up uh, in, in infection very very early bone scan uh, there is increased activity and you should know what all uh, indium 1 1 11 okay gadolinium gadolinium 67 i guess gadolinium citrate all these radioactive materials are tagged with a leukocyte and you see the leukocyte excessive activity in the site of infection okay most important thing is here before 24 hours you started only iv antibiotics you will monitor improvement of esr total count and uh, crp but if it is more than 24 hours already pus has formed you have to do decompression you remember this word decompression or drilling of the bone you have to drill the bone to let out the pus remember these words i will have some uh, diagrams in a subsequent slides okay management of osteomyelitis again i want to insist i have to no amount of repetition is less okay so clinical diagnosis as i said always diagnosis is on suspicion as i told you on suspicion you will start the antibiotics but you always take along with blood tests you try to do aspiration and send for culture sensitivity why only then you are sure which organism and which antibiotics the organism sensitive then you can always change because we started empirical treatment considering staphylococcus is the most common organism okay right so how long the antibiotics given are please remember 2 weeks iv 4 weeks oral please remember totally 6 weeks antibiotics are given so 2 weeks iv you will start uh, empirically then you get culture report if it is sensitive you will continue if it's not you will change looking for esr crp if it doesn't respond means there can they have to change antibiotics or you have to do decompression of the bone Okay, please remember that. Complications of acute osteomyelitis. Most commonly, you should remember acute osteomyelitis complication, general and local. So, general complication can be septicemia or distant abscess, also called as metastatic abscess. But most common complication of acute osteomyelitis is. it becomes chronic please remember most common complication of acute osteomyelitis is chronic osteomyelitis so these are all other uh, complications so if there is infection there is a damage of uh, epiphysis hence there can be stunted growth there can be limb length discrepancy or there can be deformity they the child will have a abnormal growing bone valgus varus depending upon which part of the growing growth uh, cartilage is affected second is pathological fracture deformity as i told okay paprika sign pap so as i told you paprika sign i will i have not explained this comes in chronic osteomyelitis but please uh, now that the question has appeared you please read carefully paprika sign during debridement is crucial in <coughs> management of which condition i already given, I, i have given you a hint 
okay in chronic osteomyelitis of course it is not in tumor prodis abscess is just for confusion but i will explain you then you will never be confused in your life see this is what i was talking paprika sir this you please focus on this slide very interesting the patient comes with there is a wound discharging sinus which is discharging pus okay this is called as probing you in surgery you have been taught isn't it to differentiate between the ulcer and the sinus i will not go into that so now you know there is a discharging sinus this has become subsequently like this so what you do this i am please remember i am talking of chronic osteomyelitis what i do i have to excise the all unhealthy tissue here okay the wound becomes like this so you have to go on excising the skin till you get the healthy skin how much bone you are going to remove till you see the bleeding bone the capillary bleeding is seen on the surface of the bone that is called as paprika sign okay you understand you go on you see during debridement you do not know what is healthy what is unhealthy so you go on removing the bone unhealthy bone till you reach the margins of the bone where there is active punctate bleeding punctate bleeding or small capillaries bleeding is seen on the surface of the bone that is called as paprika sign that indicates that is a healthy bone that is the end of your debridement okay negative pressure wound therapy have you heard of this i'm sure have you heard of this no sir no okay don't bother i will explain that i will i will come to that that's very very interesting i'll come to that so anyway i'll answer this for you it gives good granulation to show no doubt it is one of the technique for management of soft tissue defect okay please remember it is one of the management of soft tissue defect so i'll explain you how it is done and where it is done it is of course used intermittently or continuously okay necrotic tissue is not a contraindication it is not a contraindication answer is this i will explain you in a subsequent slides osteomyelitis in sickle cell anemia okay this is a repetition will not spend time here answer is salmonella which of the following is not true regarding acute pyogenic osteomyelitis okay please read carefully most common site is diaphysis true or false false very good it is false sequestrum is the new bone formation surrounding the involucrum true or false false, false. very good most common organism is staph true true very good cloaca are discharging sinus true okay shivani has answered true i will mark it for a while most common route of in, in, in infection is direct inoculation during trauma true or false false because i told you most common is hematogenous spread okay cloaca are discharging sinus please remember this is not correct i will explain what is cloaca with pictures in subsequent slide shivani you please remember okay this is another important thing uh, you should know 
this is classification of chronic osteomyelitis sear knee and madder classification try to somehow remember with some mnemonic sear knee c i r n y and madder classification this is very important it it takes in two factors into consideration one is anatomical two is host response host response very easy please don't straight away jump to reading all these four types please remember the logic or the rational behind the classification so there are four types anatomical types depending upon which part of the bone is affected common sense and how the body or the host is responding so there are four anatomical types three physiological host response host response okay a b c simple good host response host response is good systemic is good but local compromise okay host not a candidate for surgery where the treatment can become more problematic if there is compromised host response he is not good candidate for surgery okay as i told you see systemic response of the host is good local response is compromised means there will be no fever and uh, chills and other things but locally that go on there can be pus formation there can be discharging sinus in host if there is a very good systemic response and a very good local response if this can end up in form of brodie's abscess i will not go into that but this is the type of as i told you anatomical types simple don't try to remember in the order it is okay but medullary diffuse medullary entire bone is spread and medullary if you can remember the anatomy of the bone you can easily remember the types of chronic osteomyelitis so medullary here entire diffusely involvement of medullary medulla of the bone is involved then comes your superficial okay sir medullary superficial osteomyelitis this is commonly seen in diabetic foot or there is a trauma there is a wound on the surface bones where like in ulna or the upper end tibia where the bone is palpable because of chronic soft tissue infection it is spreading to the bone superficial then comes your localized only this part of the bone is affected diffuse osteomyelitis means entire bone gets affected right total duration of antibiotics in acute osteomyelitis 6 weeks okay good true regarding osteomyelitis in the new born most common in diaphysis true or false false very good infection is unifocal in newborn the chances of multifocal infections are very very high high organism are derived from maternal genital tract true sir. very good e coli is wrong all are true regarding septic arthritis except very interesting you please read this you should answer going on the background of discussion you should be able to answer this there is only one not multiple choice except all are true except e coli is the most common very good that is the
correct answer. Okay. Staph for yes, yes, common in children affects the growth plate definitely. Septic arthritis destroys the growth plate and there can be deformities. Aspiration of the joint is, de is the diagnostic modality. Because there is effusion doesn't mean there can be osteo there can be osteomyelitis with sympathetic effusion. But aspiration of the joint sent for cytology and culture, then you will confirm the diagnosis. Okay, this is one more important thing. Uh, I will explain you the theory in, after the questions. Multifocal non-separative osteomyelitis is seen in. Unless you have read some MCQs, orthopedic MCQs, I am sure you will not be able to answer. Okay, multifocal non-separative osteomyelitis is in, seen in Sappho syndrome. Okay, I'll explain you in subsequent slides about the Sappho syndrome. Multifocal osteomyelitis is associated with, again, Sappho syndrome. So what is Sappho syndrome? Sappho syndrome, here is the uh, uh, expansion. Sappho, yes, is for synovitis, acne, postulosis, hyperostosis, and osteomyelitis. Please remember this. If you can go and read, read today in one of your unrated textbook, you will get this. Of course, these images you might not find. Huh? There is one more thing is bull head. Bull head sign. Bull head sign is seen in Sappho syndrome. This I feel there is no such question in the past, but it can appear in future. Look at the sign here. It looks, it is a bull head, isn't it? So, this is the sternum. This is the first ribs. This is the clavicle. Excessive hyperostosis, excessive bone formation. Look at this part of the chest cage. Looks like a bull head, isn't it? Bull head sign is seen in Sappho syndrome. It is just question of repetition and trying to memorize and remembering this. Okay? That is because of hyperostosis. One more thing what I was telling is osteomyelitis. This is seen in non-separative Multifocal, multiple bones are involved, usually in adolescent. Okay, Sappho syndrome, am I clear? Synovitis, acne, pustulosis, hyperostosis, and osteomyelitis. Okay, please go and read, then you will never forget once again. All are true about chronic osteomyelitis. Yes, except. Option three, sir. Yes. Okay, cloaca is the hole in the nulloprum. All are correct. Chronic osteomyelitis is di diagnosed mainly by what is the hallmark of osteomyelitis on X ray? Involucrum. No. Sequestrum is the hallmark of chronic osteomyelitis. Please remember this. Involucrum formation depends upon periosteal elevation, host response, and other things. But sequestrum definitely is a hallmark of chronic osteomyelitis. Okay. Yeah, this is very interesting diagram. Only then you will not forget. Look at this bone here. This is a dead bone. This is a uh, specimen. Okay. Inside there is a dead bone surrounded by a involucrum. Okay. There is a opening like this. That is cloaca. This understand. Imagine a tumbler or uh, uh, whatever some utensils, huge rounded utensil. There is an opening in the uh, top. That is 
the cloaca. If there is only one opening, if there are multiple opening, there can be multiple cloaca. Cloaca is singular. Cloaca is plural. Okay. So this is a abnormal newborn formation. This is your sequestrum. This opening is cloaca. Understand? The same thing you transferred. Of course, this is not the same specimen. This is a different uh, X-ray. Look at this carefully. You look at this. There's a dense white line. Understand? Dense white line is. My voice is clear. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So this dense white line is a sequestrum. Okay, and remember, there is a small opening here. There is a small opening here. Is a cloaca. Understand? This entire thing, white bone, you can see here, is a sequestrum, and this is a newborn formation. Okay. Ha. Huh. This is a better diagram. Look at this. This end. Entire bone has become a sequestrum. Okay, this bone has become a sequestrum. Body is trying to develop a new bone across this, across this. Okay, that is an involucrum, right? Understand? So, if there is adequate involucrum formation, then only you should remove the sequestrum. Why you have to remove the sequestrum? Because it is unless that body tries to remove the dead bone. So, so sequestrum is a most common cause for non-healing sinus. You suppose the sinus is not at all healing, means you should look. For something underlying sequestrum, body is trying to remove the sequestrum through the discharging sinus. That's how the bone spicules, uh, the degraded bone comes keeps on coming in the form of bone spicules, right? These words are very very important. So the most common surgery done in chronic osteomyelitis is sequestrectomy. When if there is a sequestrum. But now look at the picture here. There is a you remove this sequestrum, but you have to remove the. This is um, imagine this is a big cavity here. You have to remove the entire roof of this cavity. Means the bone will become like this. You remove the sequestrum. You remove the uh, part of the roof or the of the uh, involucrum. Because if you leave the cavity like this after removing the sequestrum, this becomes a collapse. Uh, why abscess has to, after abscess is drained, you have to do compression bandage because the cavity has to collapse. But this is being a bone cavity. This doesn't collapse. So you have to remove the sequestrum and de-roof the cavity. That is called as saucerization. Saucerization means cup. Imagine this is a cup like this. This becomes a saucer. Saucerization because if if you do if you make a wide shallow cavity like this, nothing keeps collecting. Okay, but if there is a cup like this, there is collection of all inflammatory and necrotic tissue. So that's why sequestrectomy and saucerization is a standard procedure. But after you do that, you remove, uh, there is different ways of covering the defect. I told you about a negative pressure therapy, wound therapy, I'll come to that later. Okay, this is one more picture. Look at this. Sequestrum, look at this. This is a sequestrum. This is a newborn. Newborn, don't imagine something beyond a normal bone. In the normal bone only, look at this. This is a newborn. 
this is a dead bone sequestrum is there this there is a this sequestrum is trying to come out of the skin here look at this such a beautiful x-ray this is a skin this is you see there is a hole here this is a sinus sinus is seen in the uh, skin but the same if you follow the sinus here it leads to cloaca cloaca is hole in the bone imagine sinus is hole in the skin cloaca is a hole in the bone so this sequestrum is trying to come out of this bone and come out of this sinus okay so what are the complications of chronic osteomyelitis deformities of the bone pathological fracture most common is recurrence recurrent it doesn't get completely healed systemic side effect is rarely amyloidosis in theory exam or in your viva please don't mention this in the first it is most very rare complication squamous cell carcinoma at the mouth of the sinus malignant transformation of mouth of sinus in the form of squamous cell carcinoma is also one of the complication but most common complication is pathological fractures deformities of the bones malignancy amyloidosis are rare complication which of the following is not true regarding tubercular osteomyelitis well i didn't come to that i was talking more mainly about pyogenic osteomyelitis all this while we were discussing pyogenic osteomyelitis okay but this one question appeared maybe i'll touch upon with that in a, a next class subsequent class where i'll deal with septic arthritis and other specific type of uh, infections which of the following is not to regarding tubercular osteomyelitis secondary to, to tb yes definitely it should be correct periosteal reaction is seen don't know sequestrum is uncommon inflammation is minimal okay so secondary to tuberculosis definitely yes then comes your periosteal reaction is minimal in tuberculosis it is a chronic low grade infection so periosteal reaction is very less sequestrum is uncommon false sequestrum is common inflammation is minimum no so the answer sequestrum is uncommon is a correct answer okay types of sequestrum this is again very important for you in your undergraduate exam and otherwise most importantly these are different types of sequestrum and these are the conditions where you are seeing that if you understand the logic then you will never forget see tubular sequestrum is seen in pyogenic osteomyelitis in children please remember see there is a bone if i can draw this again so there is a pus starting from here and pus escapes under the periosteum so this periosteum the pus here under the periosteum above the bone the entire bone is surrounded by a pus so this original bone entire long bone becomes sequestrum that is called as it entire tubular or diaphyseal sequestrum entire long bone you see in very very young children you see the entire bone become sequestrum but nothing to be afraid because because of elevation of periosteum there is a new bone formation new tibia formation so tubular or diaphyseal sequestrum is seen in acute pyogenic osteomyelitis in children okay ring sequestrum ring sequestrum is is seen in 
two things amputation stump and steenman pin okay please remember whenever you are doing a amputation of below knee imagine this is a below knee amputation this is tibia and this is fibula so you elevate the periosteum and close this the end of the bone sometimes becomes devascularized imagine this tibia end of the tibia it looks like this like a ring so ring sequestrum is seen in amputation stump and in external fixator okay please remember i forgot to add the diagram this is a fracture we have put a steenman pin and external fixator this is a tibia and this is a external fix these are the pins so where the pin bone interfaces are there this pin bone interfaces are there there you will form ring sequestrum okay ring sequestrum is seen in amputation stump and stain one pin please remember this okay then comes your ivory sequestrum is seen in syphilis most importantly is feathery sequestrum or flake sequestrum is seen in tuberculosis of the ribs see as it is ribs are very thin cortex so if that becomes a sequestrum there is a very very feather light looks like a feather feathery or flake sequestrum is seen in tuberculosis of rib okay kissing sequestrum is because the adjacent body vertebra you, you know tuberculosis of the spine starts in the paradiscal space there is a corresponding two sequestrum uh, adjacent to each other it is seen in paradiscal uh, tuberculosis or even in the knee joint kissing lesion is seen in rheumatoid arthritis but kissing sequestrum is seen in paradiscal tubercular osteomyelitis bombay sequestrum some people are very fond of asking this bombay sequestrum is black in color where is because of the fungal infection or chronically exposed bone because of pollution and dust it becomes black that's why it is called as bombay sequestrum or a black sequestrum okay complications of acute osteomyelitis are except few more questions come on all are complications of acute osteomyelitis except please remember this is acute osteomyelitis My malignancy very good see if there was malignancy if this was a chronic then this would have been not the answer but here it is given as acute so chronicity is right fracture of pathological fracture is right septicemia is right eight year old boy presents with gradually progressing swelling and pain since six months x ray showing lytic lesion surrounded by sclerotic margin okay please remember there is a lytic lesion surrounded by a sclerotic margin we have answered this already brody soft very good see this uh, i want to please remember this left hand side is picture of brody's abscess see look at this so nicely there is a cavity here surrounded by a sclerotic bone but there is no periosteal reaction here so nice the margins are so very well maintained no destruction of the bone anywhere so very well localized lytic lesion surrounded by a sclerotic margin this is brody's okay on the contrary look at this sclerosing osteomyelitis of gary these are two variants of chronic osteomyelitis some people call as subacute but please don't get into that 
so gary is osteomyelitis there is only sclerosis there is no cavity anywhere there is no lytic lesion anywhere this entire bone looks sclerosed so sclerosing osteomyelitis it is non separative osteomyelitis gary is osteomyelitis is most commonly seen in mandible then comes your upper end of tibia please remember this okay uh this uh, flow chart or uh, schematic diagram please remember osteomyelitis is can be either acute or chronic chronic again it can be suppurative or non suppurative okay so chronic osteomyelitis pyogenic can be your regular chronic pyogenic osteomyelitis chronic non suppurative means non pus forming it can be sclerosing again it can be focal or diffuse focal means it's only on restricted to one place diffuse means entire bone is involved gary is osteomyelitis and chronic recurrent multifocal osteomyelitis this is one special entity sapho syndrome is a part of this okay if you can remember well and good osteomyelitis yes uh, okay this is what i was talking of gary's osteomyelitis most commonly please remember unlike chronic other osteomyelitis it involves the diaphysis okay anaerobic organism but most importantly it is confusing on x ray you should rule out the malignancy it can be sometimes looking like a osteoid osteoma that's why your tissue diagnosis is important unlike acute osteomyelitis where you treat by suspicion chronic osteomyelitis if you are if there is no sinus no uh, sequestrum you have to do a tissue biopsy confirm your diagnosis and treat all are associated with chronic osteomyelitis except you'll answer this i'm sure come on i told you amelodysis is definitely one of the rare co complication of chronic osteomyelitis metastatic abscess yes if there is infection going on a, some part of the body when if there is immunity which subsides for some nutritional problem and there can be metastatic spread causing abscess elsewhere okay of course sequestrum is definitely associated with chronic osteomyelitis myositis ossific cans is seen in trauma most commonly around the elbow okay so the answer is con myositis ossificans true about osteomyelitis in hiv except it is immune compromise i told you staph aureus is common newborn formation is present bilateral necrosis is absent necrosis is present okay instead okay so the, uh, one more modality of treatment of osteomyelitis is suppose there is a tibia there is infection here they put one tube here and one tube here after debridement they connect this to a saline bottle they connect this to a suction so there is a saline bottle with iodine it goes continuously into the body in the affected part and it is sucked out by a suction so continuous irrigation and suction continuous irrigation suction so insulation treatment in osteomyelitis is common sense is it has to be continuous suction drainage definitely if you do intermittent suction continuous drainage what is the point 
so it has to be continuous suction and continuous drainage non healing sinus is common clinical feature in chronic cost most common frequent cause of this presentation okay remember non healing sinus in chronic osteomyelitis sinus is not at all healing what is the commonest cause for presence this? of sequestrum very good presence of the sequestrum ideal treatment of acute osteomyelitis read carefully you will answer definitely antibiotics plus decompression very good so i told you within 24 hours the patient comes the antibiotics might work the infection will resolve if it doesn't work the antibiotics is, uh, the organisms are not sensitive or already pus formation has happened so you have to do the decompression this decompression or drilling of the bone is not sufficient so antibiotics and decompression okay that's all for today uh, i hope all are there okay shivani has left manjunath and shrisha this osteomyelitis thank you sir looks the topic looks boring again you go and read today definitely you will uh, reinforce whatever i have explained okay thank you thank you manjunath thank you sirish thank you sir So, Pulkesh will close the meeting.